Here is a box of cordless telephones. These are very good telephones. It's a VTAC set. 5.8 the gigahertz telephones. Looks like it's a at least a two handset system, maybe a three. Yeah, three handsets. This is the VTAC. Uh, the VTAC. They all seem to have different numbers, which I don't understand. This is the VTAC 6773. 5.8 gigahertz cordless telephone. This is a great system. I have one of these. I've had it for years. And it has, as far as I'm concerned, pretty much the best handset speakerphone known to exist. My uncle had a set of these back in the day. That was the phone that he had after the... Here we go with the tape again. It was the, the set that he had after the XCA650. And so he must have gotten these right after he, or I guess right before, he gave me the 650 and then uh, history repeats itself and uh, he gave me these after he got the Uniden 1580 and he only replaced these because it kept eating through the batteries and the screen started to go bad and I used them for years I had replaced the battery several times um, and then uh, at the screens, I just lived with it. And then one of the handsets, I can't remember, I think something happened. One of the handsets broke. It just stopped interfacing with the base. And I didn't know how to troubleshoot it because, as far as I know, there's no way to register and deregister these units. So at that point, I looked for another set because I wanted a three handsets unit. And I found another one. This one, I believe they pictured the screens were working, which is getting hard to find, so that's why I bought this one. It feels like there's batteries in this. Of course, they're not the original, because I'm sure they're spoiled. This has the Fruit Green Nickel Metal Hydride Battery. And it looks like this thing spent most of its life on the charger. You can see it's yellowed, uh, corresponding to where the charger would sit. They're all like that. And they all have these fruit green batteries in them. Oh no, this one's all corroded. Oh, good. Look at that. Not good at all. Well, oh yeah, you can see it's all wonky on the side too. Yikes. Well, not good. These fruit green batteries are going right into the fruit green trash because I'm not playing with that. You get that corrosion in there and it goes down and it ruins uh, the traces on the board and then you got a problem. Well, let's see if I have any, uh, any other batteries we can use for the video. These aren't really the right size or they're not at all the right size, but 
historically I just jammed them in anyways. That's what we'll do here, and it looks like the screen in fact is good. Well, it was good until the, the plug came out. It looks good. I'll plug in the base before the battery runs out. I don't know how much charge those things have in them. I wonder if these were in a smoking home because they're all like kind of grimy. Even the cords are. They got like a coating of junk on them. I would say it's kitchen grease, but I don't think all three handsets was in the kitchen. So it looks like uh, the screens are not a hundred percent, but they're not bad for this model. That's pretty good. Yeah, the buttons are all sticky. Gross. Let's see if I got any more batteries here. This isn't the right shape. The plug. Um, the plug is correct though. And the display on this one is actually 100%. I don't think this will shut though. No, it's not going to shut. Okay. Here we go, one more. This is not charged up. So, I'm um, going to have to pause the video and charge this up, and then we'll continue later on. Because it's not going to be of much use if all the batteries aren't charged up. Okay, so we'll let that charge up, and let's see the screen on that one, yeah, it's missing a couple lines, but it looks like a good portion of it's still there. Alright, let those charge up and we'll pick up the video later. Okay, the telephones have charged up, at least they should be charged up enough to get through the video. So let's go ahead and plug in the phone line, give me the phone line, and let's call these telephones. And now that they're charged up, I'm seeing that the screens are not quite as good as I initially thought. Um, this one's pretty bad. It's enough that you can still kind of read the words and see what it says, but it's definitely yeah, good. This one's better. It's only missing a couple lines. And this one seems to be a hundred percent. So that's nice. Alright, so let's call these phones. Okay, so it seems like the ringers have been changed. 
which is kind of uncommon. I've been told to put the ringer volume down lower in the video, so I just turned it down lower. This one has some reverberations issues. Those were the three ringers I always used, although I think my uncle might have used them on the the ringer number zero, I don't really remember. Okay. Looks like the caller ID comes in okay. Can't read all the characters on it, but that's because of the screen. Let's turn the answering machine on. Answering machine on. It's a bit, a bit on the loud side. Record a voice message. Hello, I'm unable to answer your call right now. Please leave your name, number, and a message after the tone. Record a voice message. Set security code. Set audible message alert. Okay, let's see what that announce only sounds like. So very welcome. Report a void message. Set security code. Set audible message alert. Set announce only. On. Off. Set base ringer. On. Set number of ring. Four. Six. Tool saver. Two. Report a void message. Hello. Goodbye. Okay, so now we'll hear the default greeting. This is my message that I'm leaving after the tone, and I don't think it's even recording. No, it's not even recording. Okay, well, let's change the greeting and then we'll try again. This is Bob Smith. Record your message before the tone, otherwise we're not calling you back. Hello, this is Bob Smith. Record your message before the tone, otherwise we're not calling you back. 
It's hard to describe the sound, but the VTEC and ATNT answering machines from this era had a very distinct sound to the recording. To me, it's instantly identifiable. Okay, let's hear that uh, that message, and I'll try to. Well, I got to turn this off, otherwise we'll get uh, feedback. Try to record a message this time. Hello, this is and not on. Hello, this is Bill. I wasn't able to record the message before the tone, but I hope that you still call me back because I had something important to tell you. Over. And now let's try to go into mailbox too. I guess I don't know how to use the equipment. It's pound two or star two. I guess I don't know how to use the equipment. Mailbox 3, you have one new message. Wednesday, 12.04 a.m. Goose! End of messages. Mailbox 3, you have one whole message. One whole Wednesday, message. 12, message deleted. End of messages. Mailbox 1, you have two new messages. Wednesday, 12.05 a.m. Hello, this is Bill. I wasn't able to record the message before the tone, but I hope that you still call me back because I had something important to tell you. Over. Message deleted. Wednesday, 12.08 a.m. I guess I don't know how to use the equipment. End of messages. Please select mailbox. All old messages deleted. Okay, so it seems like the answer machine is working just fine. And the recording quality was very typical of uh, these machines. It's not the greatest, it's not the worst I've heard, but it definitely has like a weird kind of digital sound to it. It's kind of hard to describe it, but... It's very obvious to me. Okay, so let's go to the outside line and let's make a call. We'll call the Farmer Jones code line. Oop. These are pretty non-responsive buttons. these dial too quickly it doesn't grab the line soon enough so this is a case actually where you would use the pause does it not let you pre-dial 
a pause. Apparently it does not. The backlighting is working. Hello, Farmer Jones here in the strawberry fields with the updates for Sunday. And by the way, happy Father's Day and have a wonderful Juneteenth, a double holiday. Message is simple. Strawberries are right and ready. The speakerphone is excellent volume and excellent clarity. Strawberry fields are open from 8 a.m. to 12 noon on Sundays. And today, we are going to be picking at both Pumpkin Seed Hill, 120 Beardsley Road, and the Valley Farm, 555 Walnut Tree Hill Road. Hello. What's the problem? That's, that's the wrong numbers. consonants are all very clear. Now the earpiece I find it to be kind of tinny on these phones. It's clear but it doesn't have a nice rich lifelike sound. Try to have the court decide the case. They are pushed back each time they attack. The box was thrown beside the parked truck. The hogs were fed chopped corn and garbage. Much of the story makes good sense. The sun came up to light the eastern sky. The two met while playing on the sand. The ink stain dried on the finished page. The ripe taste of cheese improves with age. I like cheese. Very, very clear. Okay, so that one's working. Here's kind of a cool feature these have. When you turn another hand sound, there's a sound. March the soldiers past the next hill. A cup of sugar. Sweet fudge. Broke his ties with groups of former friends. Close on the rock. Chicken leg is a rare dish. Rice is often served in round bowls. The desk was firm on the shaky floor. That's good. Thanks for letting me know about the saw. Okay, so the incoming audio is exceptional. It's very clear. So now let's check the outgoing audio. I'll record some testing messages into the testing answering machine. Two old messages. Message one. Okay, this is the very first test 
testing message being transmitted through these VTEC I-6773 cordless telephones. I'm going to depart from the studio now and walk across the room. And as I do that, I will underscore that these are dual band telephones. So the transmission from the base to the handset is the 5.8 gigahertz. Mean, uh, while the transmission back from the handset to the base is only 2.4 gigahertz. Okay, I'm all the way across the room now, so if it's still clear, then the range is good. And I think the range is pretty good on these. I've used them outside quite a bit, and uh, very reasonable coverage. Okay, I am back into the studio now, and I'm going to switch the telephone onto the speakerphone. Okay, it's on the speakerphone, and I'm speaking at about the same volume and distance as I was before. Now I will put it down on the table, and we can check the pickup from a distance. Okay, the telephone is now sitting on the table, and it keeps falling over. All right, I am speaking at about one foot over the telephone, and I really like these telephones. I use them often. Because, I mean, next to the next to the Uniden 1580. I would say this is my most used set. I talk on this set extensively outside and almost any time that I need to use the speakerphone or just want to use the speakerphone because the speakerphone on these is phenomenal. Okay, so now I'm about two feet away from the telephone, three feet away from the telephone. This is about four feet away from the telephone. And I suspect that it's still working perfectly fine at this distance. And we'll be able to get a good sample because this time there's no background noise in the video, which is kind of rare. Okay, this is the 5 feet, the 6 feet, the 7 feet, the 8 feet, the 9 feet, the 10 feet. And this is the 11 feet, which is all the way across the room. And despite the distance between myself and the telephone, I suspect it's still picking up just fine. And I'm not shouting, I'm speaking at a very normal conversation volume. Okay, now we will uh, we'll hang up. I'll hang up into the button this time, then I'll call back and check the other two handsets, and we'll hang up into the base. Message two. This is a test of the handset number one. Test of the handset number three. And I've just gone back to the handset number one, and now we'll hang this one up into the base. End of messages. Wow, that speakerphone pickup was exceptional. It was as loud and clear as it was on talk or I think it's just called phone mode on these with the handset near my mouth. So truly phenomenal speaker phone. And that's one of the reasons why I use these so often because it's, you know, if you're having a long conversation, it's nice to put the phone on the table and not to hold it. And this is one of very, very few telephones I can use the speakerphone with and I never get any complaints about the audio because the speakerphone on these is just fantastic. And I wasn't shouting at any point during that speakerphone test. Even from all the way across the room, I was still speaking relatively quietly. And it, you could tell it was getting a little bit quieter, but it was still picking up clearly. And there's not many phones that will do that. So this is a, I would say this is in the top three best speaker phones I've ever used so really a great set it's a stinking shame that the screens go bad but I will continue to use these phones even once the screens fail because the speakerphone performance is just unmatched